Alright, this is Wayne Gross. I feel like I'm saying that wrong, but maybe not. But, um, yeah. I'm doing YouTubers makeup artists. This is a male makeup artist, um, YouTube personality, and a entrepreneur. So, you know, fun. Um, so let's start off with, um, the cards because, you know, you guys like to look at things. So, um, we're going to start off with the Eight of Swords. These actually came from his chart. So, um, it kind of, you know, crosses over some, you know, things. So, the Eight of Swords is restriction, so he might feel restricted. Um, at times, Five of Wands, we have arguments. There might be a couple arguments, um, either with, you know, just hecklers or just people in general being crazy. Um, <laughs> but you know, YouTube, what are you going to do? Um, so we have the Nine of Wands. The Nine of Wands is deference, so might go back and forth a little bit. We have the Nine of Swords, which is sleepless nights. He might have trouble sleeping. Um, also, we have the Five of Swords. The Five of Swords is, um, let's see. Five of Swords. Five of Swords is deception, so there might be a little bit of things going on. Anyway, um, so for his legacy, um, house, he actually has two, um, in his Mercury and his Venus, so, um, it's a Piscean energy, so it's, um, Mercury, Venus, so Piscean energy, um, let's see, electricians, um, x-ray experts, technology experts, um, he could be a astronaut, a chemotherapist, a pilot, radio, um, operators, space researchers, martial artists, um, people, um, working in film, television, um, as a fiction writer, <laughs> that's very interesting, um, photographers, herbalists, um, pimps and prostitutes, that's a thing, um, a drug dealer, <laughs> pharmaceutical worker, um, alcohol maker and distributor, um, a seafarer, um, professions that produce plastics, um, explorers, hunters, um, meditation gurus, um, puzzle experts, zen expert, or a, a motorist, or a detective. So, fun stuff. Um, could be any of those things, but he chooses to be a makeup artist. It, it, you know, it could happen. But, um, I do feel like, if anything, he would probably be, um, really good at programming, I feel. But, um, you know, some people like to do other things than, you know. But Legacy probably is going to be, um, photographer, writer, um, film, television. So his YouTube stuff could actually, you know, be kind of like a legacy for him. Um, so let's see, let's go through his chart. We have Sun, which is his legacy, um, in Pisces. We have the Moon in, uh... Capricorn, which is his seventh house, so he might meet somebody that is Capricorn or has Earth type of mentality, stability, stuff like that. Um, then we have Mercury and Pisces, the tenth house of legacy, so same thing. Uh, Venus, Pisces, tenth house and legacy. We have Mars in Cancer, the first house of identity, so he he pretty much has his, uh, you know, he's probably the best of the best in his, um, field. He's sought after for whatever reason. Um, 
Like, I don't watch makeup artists, so I don't know. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, mmm. Mm. Ah, ooh. My eyes got watery, too. Oh. So, we have Jupiter in Gemini in the 10th house of transition. Or trans, uh, transdience, uh, so, um, might feel a little bit out of place at times. Um, so, let's see, Saturn in Leo, so third house in communication. There might be a bit of argument because of being in Saturn. Because you might say a lot of truth that people disagree with because they have their own truth or they deny the truth. Um, so, we have Uranus in um, Scorpio. So, it's the fifth house in creativity. So, a lot of your things, you know, could be a little bit, um, like, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. And, you know, just have a lot of fun with that. Um, so, Neptune in Sagittarius is the sixth house of responsibilities. So, probably feels responsible for a lot of things if there's something wrong with certain makeup or there's something wrong with her, his, I said, almost said her, um, his business. Um, he's willing to take full responsibility. Probably somebody who's really good at customer service um, and fixing things such as that. Um, so, Pluto in... Libra, the fifth house of creativity. Um, so Libra and Scorpio um, could be a bit of a polar uh, lapse. Um, sometimes the Libra side um, takes over and then the Scorpio side will take over um, for um, like execution. Um, Libras also are into executing a plan, but, um, I feel like they need to be a hundred percent before, um, launching a new idea. Okay, um, we have Lilith in Cancer the Crab, that's 12th house of Translucent, um, and then you have the North Node in Libra, which is the fourth house of Roots, so a lot of maybe childhood things. Um, I feel like you might have been bullied. Um, I don't want to say that, but I do feel like, um, maybe your family was kind of, you know, wishy-washy on, like, details of your childhood, or, um, was overprotective. Um, could be one or two things. Okay, so, um, there's an empty house in second house. Um, and eighth house, ninth house, and eleventh house. The second house is values, so feelings of insecurity and instability. Like I said, either wishy-washy on details of the childhood or um, overproductive um, parents. So, let's see, eighth house is intimacy, so lacks fear of death and danger, so kind of uh, free reign. You might have learned behaviors of what... Um, like danger is and your limits, but um, if it's like a new activity, you probably don't have a lot of, um, you know, there's no boundaries when it's, um, when it's a new experience. So, let's see, um, ninth house, overly attached to where you grew up, um, desire um, to never change. So, ninth house is beliefs. So, your belief could be, um, uh, let's see, you come from England, I think. So, you might like England a lot, you might like the area you grew up, or, um, just philosophies about the place where you grew up. Um, then we have the 11th house. The 11th house is self. So probably um, difficult, give it, uh, difficulty um, maintaining friendships. So there might be a lot of touch and go, a lot of people that might not understand what exactly you're doing as a makeup artist. But, um, you know, it could be a bit of misunderstanding or miscommunication here. But I feel like you're so okay with yourself 
and I'm speaking to, like, the person instead of, like, I know that there's fans of people that watch those, but I, you know, I feel like it's a more personal thing because of certain houses here, but, um, I do feel like there's a lot of detachment, like, fear of abandonment, also fear of actually being too close quarters with people because you don't really want them to know too much which I feel like that's like that for a lot of people but um you know once you do open up to somebody it's you know it's it's unreal how much like you know about a person or they know about you or like things that you might have in common or share um but for the most part um there is a seventh house here, partnership with an earth sign, maybe um, Capricorn. More of like probably an authority figure um, is what you're going to get married to. But um, yeah, I feel like the seventh house kind of guides what you need as far as stability. Um, so for a lot of people, they don't have seventh houses. Like, I don't know why, but it's... Um, but, um, yeah, I know a lot of fans are probably watching this and be like, wow, oh, this, this is kind of crazy. But, um, so, again, I channel the person. I don't channel anything else. So I got a few things for you. I got the Triumph Arch. If you've ever seen the Six of Wands, um, the traditional one with the guy riding on the horseback and then there's, like, this archway of... I think it's, um, hollies, if I'm not mistaken, but it's, like, either olive leaves or it's holly leaves. It reminds me of that. I saw that in my vision. Um, so, I also saw an empty circle. So, it could be, um, it could be your sun or it could be the moon that really, um, is... It's coming through. I feel like it might be kind of like an island. Like you might feel like an island sometime. Um, there's a lion, um, like a Leo influence, um, in your Saturn and in, yeah, it's in your Saturn. So you feel more comfortable in your third house of communication than you do anything else. Um, a bow. So you might have a bit of things pointing you in a direction of things to handle at times. Um, so I did have a vision of a deathbed, which don't think, don't think bad of it. I feel like it's more of like a symbol because it was like kind of how you see like a bed in like a mirror, if that makes sense. Like instead of having four legs, it had six. So I saw that kind of uh, a de detachment. So you might have kind of a uh, skewed vision of death or how all that stuff works. Um, and then we have a deer head, kind of like a haunting uh, picture to talk about with anybody. But I do feel like the deer head is kind of more of a gentle side. Um, or vulnerable side that you don't really s talk too much about because usually if I see a deer head in one of my visions it's usually something that you're not addressing you're not addressing how vulnerable you are and then I had a vision of that case you know that's in Snow White um, at the end when she dies from poison um, that case. So there's something that's valuable that you don't want anybody to know about. Um, it's probably more of a memory, I feel, or of a meeting that you had that was influential that influenced you in some way, shape, or form. It could be a childhood thing, too. It could be a childhood memory, maybe of a ball game or some type of memory with your folks or a vacation. Um, and then we have a hand. I feel like a hand is kind of like when when a child takes your hand across the street type of thing. So that could be a bit of like childhood reminisce or a bit of 
just comfort, like somebody takes your hand, it means a lot more to you than like normal people would be like, oh, this hand of whatever. Um, but yeah, I feel like ha holding somebody's hand is a big deal or like seeing somebody's hand being offered is a big deal. So an offering of any kind is a big deal for you. And I talk to uh, the camera like it's, I'm just talking to one person. I'm so used to having one-on-one -on -one, um, readings. So excuse me if I do that. <laughs> I do that a lot. But I do feel like this is like a really good type thing to do because it's like what if they weren't YouTubers, what would they be doing? And it answers the question how, like, the person overall is feeling, how how they feel, like, in general, if they're meeting somebody new. Usually the empty houses come out and kind of, you know, paint on this insecurity, doesn't it? Um, but, yeah, I do feel like it's, you know, it's not, like, a bad thing. It's not exactly a good thing either, but I do feel like a lot of people can relate to this. I feel like you might might have been forced to do a lot of things or think a certain way, and then you just kind of branch off and do your own thing. So that was the reading for Wayne Gross. Hopefully you learn something. You learn that, you know, you can be yourself. It doesn't matter who you are. Um, everybody has a little bit of different insecurities and things that they can be proud of. If I do get um, a million views on this, well, a million subscribers on this, maybe. But if I get a million views on this, I will put the entire chart of his... Um, like, his legacy, his creativity, um, his identity. His first house feels really strong because Cancer, um, the crab, is, you know, pretty much like the motherly figure. So, we'll look at that, too, if you want. But, um, if I get a million views on this, I will definitely post his entire chart in the description if I can. Um, so people can look at that and see what's going on there. Um... So that you can relate and try to, you know, figure out if you might have the same aspirations as some of your favorite YouTubers. Um, anyway, if you like this, leave a like. If you like what I'm doing on here, subscribe. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, ideas for my next video, leave them in the comment section below and I will read those. Um, yeah, I just like doing these because... It's really interesting to see, like, different people that you may admire or you watch all the time and see how they actually feel or how they actually are when, you know, the cameras are off and when they're not in, in their pers persona online. So, it's pretty cool. Anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one, alright? Bye now.